CFR Network, CFR News, the ultra low clean air zone. A clean air zone for Birmingham. What are the damn implications for this year? Got one down in London. They're one looking to do one in, in Bath as well. I think Leeds are stated to potentially look at doing something like this. And, you know, on the face of it, it's to reduce pollution, isn't it? Um, to create a healthier environment for, for people within this uh, ultra clean air low ultra low clean air zone like you know so so in essence we've we've, we've got some a good reason to potentially look at this and think this is this is um this is something good and on the faces as i say it, it is it does have some very good implications um let's peel back some of the layers on this here obviously this is to reduce pollution as we can see and if we look at the areas look at the map this is encompassing a, a wide area. You know, they're talking about the city center, but you know, this is this is gonna impact outside of the business element of it. I'm just looking at the residents because this falls under a lot of residential areas. <clears throat> Pardon self. Hockley Aston, parts of Neachels, Borsley Green, Ladywood possibly yeah possibly some parts of Winston Green um Lee Bank Highgate Digbeth this is a densely populated area this is and these are on the outskirts of the town center of Birmingham the city center I should say of Birmingham um again really understand why they're doing it uh in regards to the the overall, let's reduce pollution, let's get people's health up. What was the government saying to the manufacturers of these vehicles who have been pumping out this filth for how many damn years? I mean, technology is, is definitely advanced and it's, it is still advancing with the advent of these electric cars, which are everywhere, and the hybrid vehicles. Um, like, I remember watching Tomorrow's World and them talking about, you know, having those little competitions with the universities and they had solar power vehicles and they had vehicles that are running off various different bits of, you know, water and stuff like that. And, you know, we had hydrogen buses running around Birmingham at one point. We had a tram system in Birmingham. We're, we've just got remnants of the infrastructure for those things now up in Stockland Green. That's the only that's the only remnant you can see of any tr tracks tram tracks in the road. I mean, we've got the metro now, which is servicing more the Black Country end, and is being extended to Mary Mary or Mary as I call it Hill. You know, let's get some infrastructural work going on. They've got the HS two going on, which is causing all kind of crazy, and they're digging up all kind of wildlife and stuff, and there's testers and that to make it faster between. Birmingham and London, like, let's put some infrastructure in place so we've got adequate charging facilities for these damn electric vehicles, um, you know, and again, looking back at the manufacturers, who was um, saying to Volkswagen, BMW and all the rest of them, Ford, saying, yo, listen, the pollution is crazy, and let's look at the bosses, the bosses themselves, they're kicking out the most of the stuff. And they do have some green quote unquote buses now, but you know, I'm talking about historically. Historically, the, the, the thought of, of people in the city centers has been none. When, when New Street was open as a, as, a, as a road, as a two lane road, and buses parked all the way out there from, from the top of what, from JD, all the way down to, to the old Midland Bank. That's how far I'm going back, yeah? And them sitting there idling, pumping out that filth. Nothing was thought then, oh, you know, should we reduce the number of buses that are in here? Should we improve the timetable, make it more efficient and all that? Nah, 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 none of that was thought about. And we fast forward in 20, to the Gregorian year of 2021. 
1st of June. And we've got this clean air zone. And they've, I don't know what kind of technology they're employing because apparently they've got some form of technology which is able to keep clean air separate from <laughs> polluted air. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? And then what this is going to do is going to create rat runs. But then I'm looking at other articles and they're saying that they're going to be blocking off roads and stuff to, to make it impossible for people to do rat runs. Now, how about the people who are coming in, in from out of town, from far afield and like, yeah, we're coming to Brum. And they're on the M6 and they're getting off at Junction 6. And then all of a sudden they've got these signs saying clean air zone. Eight pound charge, depending, you know, if you're a small vehicle. If not, it's it's what sixteen pound or something crazy like that. That they haven't got many options, you know. When you come off at Pomp Island, Junction Six, Dartmouth Circus, like, where are you going? <laughs> You'd literally, and from what I can see, you would have to go back on yourself. You'd have to literally almost go back on yourself towards like Aston and stuff to avoid the uh, the, the the zone. You're going to have people literally slamming the anchors on saying, yo, I ain't got the money. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this shit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get charged eight pounds. I didn't know nothing about this. This isn't London, is it? Even though, you know, Birmingham was the, 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 the cap. Well, the Midlands, Litchfield, technically Mercia uh, was the capital before Londinium. But, you know, this ain't London. We, we, a congestion charge. I know we got to pay that when we go down south, but not in Burnham. <laughs> not in old Burnham. But apparently so. Apparently so. This is what the powers that should have never have been in local government. They're doing this now. Birmingham's clean air zone. Um, and it will operate. Let's look at this. I'm on the um, Birmingham.gov website. 1st of June 2021, Clean Air Zone will be launched. Operating 24 hours a day, 365. And it will be manned um, or operated via um, number plate, automatic number plate recognition system, AMPR. The charges will be applied daily and non-compliant vehicles driving the zone will pay once for a day then they can drive in the area without any limits. Well, of course, this isn't like a pay-as-you-go service and you, you, you drive into Birmingham, you come out, you drive in, you get charged. They couldn't do that. They could not do that. It's, um, yeah. What does it mean for me? What does it mean for me as a Birmingham resident? And there is a lot of poverty, especially what's going on with the old uh, uh, zombie apocalypse and all that kind of stuff. Like, you know, people are out of work. People have lost businesses and stuff. So following our public consultation, I don't know how, who the public is that they're talking about, we plan to give some people more time to prepare. Short-term extensions, and they're offering, to, that they're offering additional support for people who find it more difficult, um, who have more polluting vehicles. Now let's look at this now. Let's look at this. What's the short-term exemptions? Let's see what 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 they're talking. Because I initially heard about government workers are going to have some kind of exemption, like nurses and that kind of stuff. Uh, overview: If your vehicle does not meet admission st uh, admission standards and will be subject to daily charge for the clean air zone, you may be eligible for temporary exemption. Yes, temporary. I think it's only for a year. Um, Check your documents, apply online. Let's see. Exemption permit. Some guidelines. If you're eligible for the exemption, you must submit your application and all supporting evidence and information by the 10th of May 2021 to guarantee receipt of your permit in time to start the clean air zone in the 1st of June. We cannot guarantee applicants support. Applications submitted after this time will be processed in time for the launch. Yeah. Uh, 
what are the, what's the what's the um the caveats what, what's what's the um the plan permanent for residents let's have a look at this here <sighs> this is uh, a, another tax on the motorists this is an, a, a clear tax on the poor i mean don't get it twisted we do have some quote unquote so-called poor people who are driving around in very nice vehicles and I would say sometimes very new uh, registration vehicles but that's by the by there are people of with G-Reg vehicles and all that kind of stuff so let's look if you live in the clean air zone and you own a vehicle that doesn't meet the standards you'll be subject to a daily charge check your vehicle registration uh exemption is valid for two years 24 months from the launch of the so you please note you will need to renew your exemption permit for after the first 12 months of it going live so to council bill documentation of the vehicle which is the v5 company vehicle uh it doesn't really say what. <laughs> I mean, you just live there and you've got an, a non-compliant vehicle and you just get an exemption. That's cool, I guess. And you renew it after 12 months. Hmm. There's a lot of tomfoolery with this. A lot. If it doesn't work or if it works very well in the city centre, but the suburbs are now more highly toxic, then you need to then think about introducing a clean air zone for, and I'm going to use King's Heath as an example, okay? Because King's Heath isn't, as I understand, in the clean air zone uh, map. So if all of a sudden um, people are starting to park in King's Heath, which, which I know is more or less an impossible task at the best of times, I, I get all of that. Then all of a sudden, if you're coughing and spluttering more in King's Heath because the drivers are stopping their journeys and maybe jumping on a bus then, as a resident of King's Heath, what happens next? 08081 009956. Why should you be coughing your guts up just because you're on the outside of this, this border? Anyway, the question I'm asking, thanks, Chris. The question I'm asking quite simply is, are you ready for June the 1st? Um, we still haven't had an answer back from the council. Guys, if you can, just give us a yes or a no, please. Either way, it's, mm -hmm. it's of interest because someone contacted me a couple of weeks ago wanting to know whether they were going to get charged for coming into Millennium Point just to have their vaccination. Um, and what we don't want, I suppose, is people deterred from having a jab unless they're fully aware of the consequences of driving into town because Birmingham City Council, they've done a fabulous job of letting people know. And, and we're doing a job of reminding you that on June the 1st, just go to Brum Breeds, okay? That's a website, go to Brum Breeds and you can explore and you can find out whether your car is compliant i mean it, it's accurate but only to a point because a couple of weeks ago we also discussed that there are cars slipping through the net both higher polluting cars and and under polluting cars being unfairly well if you're driving a high polluting car but it's on a 66 plate you're driving through with impunity when you should be getting charged but anyway that was a story from a couple of weeks ago 08081 double o double nine five six because if you say for example if if you're in coventry and you're told to drive into Millennium Point for your vaccination, you won't know anything about this clean air zone until you're on the Aston Expressway. And then if you're not paying attention, you won't even see the sign. Let's go to King's Heath. Kev's there. Hiya, Kev. Hi, Dan. Yeah, um, Happy um, St. George's Day. Yeah, that's you. I've got your flag there. I haven't seen one yet on a car anyway, you know. It's, haven't, it, it's funny, isn't it, that yeah. the English don't really celebrate St. George's like the Irish celebrate. Patrick's Day. No, no, I'll get me Patrick's Day flag out. <laughs> I might get a bulldog tattooed on, on my left backside. <laughs> on, your, on your head. And on my right one, head. I'll get a St. George's flag. That's it. Um, Dan, every, any time this has come up in the last couple of years on, on your show or Daddy's and about yeah. councils on, I've always got the same answer to these two questions. And then the, the answer was, we'll get back to you, but they never have. The simplest one first is, what about narrow boats right in the centre of town, diesel? And now on those diesel these towpaths are bars and restaurants where people are sucking in diesel off boats. And the trains. On that. And, you and the trains. But the more important one, which you, you bring up a good point, I brought it up over and over Thank and you. over again, a minute, a minute to midnight. So so let's take, we've got we've got four 
gigs in town, four venues. We've got the NIA, across the road we've got the Town Hall, yep. then we've got the O2 Academy, and we've got the Institute down in Digbeth. Now, let's say, let's say the NIA, the arena, you get a, a concert on there when we have them back. You'll get you'll get a hundred local crew there working for the for the venue for the for whoever's on. Those those hundred crew will typically start at seven in the morning and they do a four hour call. So they'll go home then at eleven. Then they'll come back at ten o'clock at night for the loadout, which typically takes four hours. So they finish again at two in the morning. So they've gone they've gone in at seven, sixteen paid eight quid, sixteen come back at eleven. Right, finished at two in the morning, which is into another day. So they've got three. Do they have three what? charges for that? Sixteen liquor. No, I'm assuming that the technology remembers the reg number because if you're a taxi driver, yeah, you, you exactly. won't be able to you won't be able to survive coming in and out of town. You'd be charged. No. You know, imagine dropping people off and coming back into Kings E to pick someone to take them back into town and vice versa. You'll get about an eight hundred pound fine. Well, some people who work on these local crew, they will get a taxi to somewhere like Kingsley and then have to come back in at ten o'clock at night to do a load Are you are you worried that you're gonna be are you worried because King's Heath isn't in the it's on the edge, are you worried that you're gonna be breathing in um other people's toxic fumes who are trying to dodge eight nicker? Well the funny thing about these clean air zones is though uh, Danny is the the exhausts really do respect boundaries, don't they? Kevin, thank you. Sarcastic, thank you, Kevin. Let's go to Noble in Tiverdale. In fact, Noble, just stay there. Let me go to Brett. Brett, have the council got back to us? No, Danny, we've been over them. We're waiting for a statement you get the, response. Do you get the impression they're trying to dodge it? I'm not holding my breath. But what we a will great, chase it up. What a great... Did you like that? I, what a, and you're holding your breath because of the clean air zone. Noble, good morning. Good day to you, Daniel. How are you doing, sir? Good day, sir. Good day. Old-fashioned way to greet somebody. Good day. Noble, are you ready for the 1st of June? I certainly am. I've now won the battle. Um, as per checking the various other websites, the ULES, etc., as most people did before the uh, website was available, yep. it said it was totally compliant. Okay, um, let, let, let's just go back to the cause of this battle, Noble, because I'm, I'm unaware of it and I'm sure the listeners will be. So I'm guessing you had a compliant car, you put the reg number into the Brum Breathes, and they told you it was non compliant. Am I right? Exactly. Okay, what exactly. car was it? It was an, an 05 plate Ford. An 05 plate petrol Ford, yeah? Petrol, indeed. Okay, indeed. so, so you, you put the reg number in and Brum Breeze told you it was going to cost you eight quid. Exactly. exactly. And, then, and then what happened? So then, based upon your conversation with a gentleman last week, um, which I did you diligently listen to, he was talking about potentially contacting either the manufacturer um, or um contacting dvla so i thought let's try dvla first um i had a conversation they said they need to do basically an investigation to, to double check i looked at the the the, the v5 and i could see the information on there but on their end they said it wasn't clear so they did an investigation which was very done very quickly on my ad but thanks to dvla and that was done i think within about two days and I had an email back to say, we have now updated the records and you have a compliant vehicle. But do you know what, Noble? That's great. But they, as I understand, they haven't done a blanket update on your make and model. All they've done, as I understand, Noble, is put your reg number into the system. So what that means, what's your car, Noble, a 2005 what? Um, Fiesta. Ford Fiesta with what engine? A 1.25 or a 1.4 or something? 1.6, Senor. 1.6, okay. So that means that other 2005 1.6 petrols, unless they go through the jump, uh, the hoop jumping process that you've had to do, they're going to get fired. Exactly. And I think it's totally unfair for the owners to be on the individual, the poor motorists and the poor people who who financially aren't potentially able to upgrade their vehicle to, a, to, a, to another car because but, they live flat bang in the, um, the, the zone. Listen, without putting words in your mouth, because it's something that I should be neutral about, do you think that the council have got the system the right way round, where the onus is on people like you to prove to them that their technology is wrong and not the other way round? It, it should be vice versa. If you're going to levy charges and fees onto someone, you need to make sure that you've got the systems in place so it's robust enough so that we don't have these things. It should be maybe a, a, a 2% tolerance of, of maybe inconsistencies. Not a, a wide blanket, look, if, unless you're going to take your time out of the day and do the research.
research and make the calls and stuff on, on you know on hold for, for a long period yeah. of time. Yeah. Yeah. People haven't got the gumption all the time to do that. No. Well, they may not even know. They may just take the medicine and just pay the eight pound fine and not bother driving into Birmingham again. You know, they may decide to shop in Coventry because, oh, my 2005 Ford 1.6 is non-compliant. Let's shop in Cov. Exactly. The idea is excellent in regards to reducing pollution. I'm, I'm, I'm totally for that. But it's, just, it's quite strange that we've got this, this zone and the pollution stays out of the zone and doesn't go into the zone. So in my opinion, moving forward, we're going to have larger cases of, of high pollution outside of these areas where they're doing the rat run. Noble, thank you very much indeed. And we also did discover from one of the callers that he drives a 66 plate MG Brett. What we did discover Damn. is that people are slipping through, through the net the other way round. And this is the concerning bit. Well, the eight pound unfairly charged fine is concerning to me anyway. But the other way round, mate, is that we had a caller who's driving a 66 plate MG, one of the last sort of MG, not, not that not the uh, convertible things, but MG do another range of cars, sure. like a five door. Yeah. I can't even remember what they're called. Anyway, 66 plate, but it's one of the last of the, the models that have been hanging around in an airfield somewhere because they couldn't sell it. Euro 5 engine, not Euro 6. Right. So he is driving literally with impunity in a polluting diesel engine because the, the software that the council are using in conjunction with the DVLA haven't clocked up this guy's 66 plate should have been registered a year earlier and would be non-compliant. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So is this clean air zone a good thing or a bad thing? Let me see the comments and let me see your thoughts. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and most definitely share.